Hello everyone, welcome to the 10th installment of Insecurity. Today we want to talk about what happens when you go home and the gifts that you bring with you. Because obviously at some point you're gonna to have to go home and we're talking home home to your parents house and assuming that you have any technical prowess you're gonna be asked what to do so to, on today's episode we want to talk about exactly what you should either bring with you what you should have ready and the types of gifts maybe you want to try and steer your family towards so again we're always drawn by Tom Webster Howdy. and uh, let's just get right into it so Tom are you are you going home? Yes, yes I am, and it's going to be very, very busy. So are you dreading the, oh, can you look at my printer for me question? I, I think dread is a little too strong. Do, do I look forward to it? No, not at all. So so you're going home. Do you have, like, a tech kit that, that you're going to maybe bring with you or yes. or something along the lines? Okay, so what's in oh, that, yes. like, tech kit? Um, anytime I go over to my mother's or my grandmother's, you know, for, for dinner, just to hang out with the family, to see a newborn, you know, nephew or something, um, I always bring a tech kit because there's always work to be done around the house, especially the holidays. And, yeah, dear, it, you know what I would really love for Christmas? If you could get rid of all these toolbars. Now, I've got this thing that pops up from the FBI that said they're going to shut off my computer. C could you take a look at that for me? It, it always works out that way. So what I take is, first of all, I take a, uh, a Linux live CD. Ubuntu tends to work good here. Linux Mint is a good choice. Um, recently, I've been moving to Linux Mint more than Ubuntu for my live CD work. So it, it's some type of Linux live CD, just so if the worst happens, you could always pull their data off to a big honking flash drive. I'm talking 8 gigs to 16 gigs here. Something you can throw a lot of data on just in case you need to get off in, in case the worst happens and you can't recover an operating system. So Linux Live CD, uh, bring with you some type of Windows install disk, something to reinstall the operating system. At this point in time, we'll get into this later, don't be using XP. XP is done. It's, it, you know, in 2014, its support is ending. It's not going to get any more security patches. Keep Windows 7 on you. Um, with that, um, you know, Windows 7 Live CD can be, or uh, Windows 7 install CD can be used as a great recovery environment. For any hardware or hard drive related issues, SpinWrite is a fantastic tool. A little pricey, but a great thing to keep in the toolkit. Um, I would also recommend, and it's kind of in a legal gray area, so I have trouble recommending it, but the Hirons Boot CD is by far the best recovery disk you could ever look for. It's got quite literally everything you would ever need in one CD. Combo fix, malware bytes, boot fixers, you name it, it's got it. And that's what I keep with me. So the first gift that you want to bring home with with uh, to your family is a big external hard drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I heard. The first thing, let's do that. And I'm going to just take it. Maybe you want to bring a second one specifically to start their backup uh, solution because that's probably the first thing that after you get rid of all the viruses and everything you want to set them up with a backup solution that is uh, a turnkey so on the Mac we're obviously talking about Time Machine uh, Windows 7 or 8 if if Windows 7 has uh, what's that I forgot the name of it it's just Windows they, they've Backup got the, yeah they've got the Windows Backup utility baked right in uh, and then if your grandmother has Linux, then I don't know why she's listening, but <laughs> we, we hope that she is. If, if she's got Linux, you're looking for the Deja Dupe set of utilities. They're really fantastic. Okay, so so now now the, now we have to get into okay. The, it's it's time for some education. You you're, you're there. You're explaining them. You're getting rid of the toolbars. And and look, that's that's going to be a problem. So the first thing, now you got your hard drive. Let's get all the data off. Let's start a backup just so we have it. And and I guess let's go from there. Is yeah. that the first? The first step is let's let's assess the problem and let's immediately get off the important stuff off. Right, right. So the the very first step, whether you're pulling off files manually to an external drive or you're setting up something like Time Machine or Windows Backup, you, you've got to get the files to a safe location because if the worst happens, if the hard drive dies on you, and I mean, you know, I know my grandmother, her computer's like 
eight years old. That hard drive isn't long for this world. I'm going to save myself some time next year by getting an external hard drive and getting a backup going now. So when the hard drive does die, you know, over the summer, I can just go, oh, no, it's, it's fine. We'll buy a $50 hard drive at Best Buy. We'll plug it in, restore your backup. It's fine. And, you know, I just saved myself several hours worth of work, especially if you're doing a Windows system backup or a full-time machine backup. You can just plug it in, restore from the drive, and you're done. You don't have to mess with operating systems, drivers, none of that stuff. So the backup, a local backup, is the first step. The next step, of course, is uh, your off-site backup. So, I mean, I, I, I personally don't use an off-site backup. What I do is I save it to my server, and then I exchange a hard drive with a friend. But I do have some Dropbox, and I do have some Google Drive space. But, yes, the next step is an off-site backup. So I think my wife recommends uh, a Carbonite, but it, it doesn't matter which one. Pay the one that's going to figure out the one that's best for you and just get it off-site. Right. And, you know, that's a great point. For me, I keep an external hard drive at a friend's house, and I have him uh, hook up a computer to his router. I back up to it every week or so. I just do a full system backup to that hard drive at his house, and it stays there. If my house burns to the ground, I've still got, you know, within a week, I've got my data stored somewhere else. And that's really the most important thing, because... If a thief breaks into your home, if the worst happens and your house burns to the ground or gets swept away into tsunami, you know, what are you going to do? That external hard drive that's sitting right next to your computer, chances are it's gone. So you've got to have something off-site, away from your home, that you can keep your really sensitive data on. And for the really sensitive stuff that I need to have everywhere, I keep it on Dropbox, on Google Drive, on Spider Oak, on any of these... Uh, Need these file locker services online that you can you can get an account with. Now, you know, don't put up your tax information on RapidShare. That's a bad idea. But Dropbox, Google Drive, and Spider Oak, they're all relatively trustworthy. You can go ahead and keep your data there. Um, if you want, take a backup and then take that external drive with you. Leave one at the house, but take the external drive with you because if something horrible happens, you've got that with you. So a, a backup, a backup should purely be the worst case for a backup should be an inconvenience at the worst. It should never be a disaster. So, so the other thing that we have to start looking at is think of your online services as as they are right now. If you're ordering stuff from iTunes, iTunes has a way to re-download the stuff. Uh, if you're doing stuff, if you're buying movies. Or your your like I said, music, uh, your photos if they're uploaded to Dropbox automatically or Google Plus. Think about that. Don't waste your time backing up stuff that you know where it is. And I, I think that's an important thing because now I'm looking at all my stuff and I'm realizing how many different spots they're there. And I can say, you know what? Maybe I don't need triple the backups of all my music. Maybe I can only do one here, one off site, and then Amazon has the rest of them. So think about that when you're setting up new services for grandma, for mom, and think about it even for you. I don't know. Right. How, yeah. Uh, so so for my grandmother, she had quite literally she had uh, twenty gigabytes of pictures, um, and it's I mean that's more than you get with free Dropbox. It's more than you get with free Google Drive. So we went ahead and we bought our Carbonite when our hard drive was starting to flake out. We got really lucky and we caught it early. So. I bought her a Carbonite account. It was fairly cheap. I signed her up. She had backups automatic for the whole year, and it was great. And her hard drive died. We replaced it. We reinstalled her operating system. We installed Carbonite. We pulled it back off. All of her data was there. It was safe. It was complete. It was really uh, why I paid for it. It's, it was the peace of mind. It was if this thing dies, I don't have to worry about it. So it, you hear tech guys all the time say this, but I'm going to preach it. Backups, backups, backups. And whether it's just, you know, the trading, the external hard drives, whether it's Carbonite, Mosey, uh, or even Crash Plan, you've got to have something off-site. Because if the worst happens, you need to have that backup plan. Okay, so now, now let's say the worst happened, you had to reformat the drive, uh, you but you got the data off. What's the... You said this before. The first thing we want to do is put an operating system on it, and we do not want XP. No, not at all. 
Um, Microsoft has stated, and, and let's, let's be honest, XP is a beast of an operating system. I love Windows XP. It was fast, it stayed out of the way, it was generally a great step forward in the land of Windows, especially SP2 introducing that firewall on by default. XP did a lot of things right. But let's be real. It's a little long in the tooth, it's been around forever, and hey, in 2014, Microsoft is dropping support, which means the most important thing is getting left behind, those patches. XP is dead. Unfortunately, we need to treat it as such. Don't install XP. I know you've got those Dell recovery disks stashed away. Do not install XP. I know it's easy. I know it's right there. Take the time. Buy the license. Go install Windows 7. It is just as trustworthy, just as fast as XP, and in some cases faster, uh, and it'll generally make your life easier. Now, if you're a student or can find a student, you can probably find upgrade disks to Windows 8 for 30 bucks. Right. If you uh, you can go to uh, any of the uh, computer building stores, when you order that flash drive, you can probably get a hundred dollar licensed copy of Windows 7 or 8. It's I know it's a hundred dollars and it's not for you, but you know what? It's going to save you a lot of time. And it's Christmas. Come on. So so now we got that on, and now we have now. Or just remember, just make sure that the laptop or the computer you have doesn't have a, a hidden partition. That may just make your life much easier. Right. And you just use the hidden partition, which is which has some cruft on it, but at least it'll take you 10 minutes and you can go back to doing whatever you were doing. Right. You don't have to do a manual OS install right. and sit there and babysit the thing. So, so okay, so now we have our backups. We have the blank drive. What's the first thing that you do from there? The first thing I do on a brand new Windows machine is I take a look and I install an antivirus. And it's been shown it's not the best out there for catching viruses, but honestly, it stays out of the way. It doesn't bug anyone. You're not going to get calls on it. And most of all, it's free. Microsoft Security Essentials. I put it on as the default antivirus on just about any family member's computer I'm working on. Most of all because it does a decent job. It doesn't do a bad job. It's not as good as ESET. It's not as good as, you know, your, your typical paid antivirus. It's not as good as paying for malware bytes or AVG. But it does a decent job. Um, and it, it does a good enough job that you can rely on it for the, the vast majority of the, you know, uh, infected PDFs or grandmother's going to download. Now, I, people always ask me, what do you run as an antivirus? And I go, me, personally, when I didn't have a Mac, you know what? I didn't run anything. But if you're if you're harping me for something, I will tell you security essentials. And they go, oh, but it's not that good. And I go, when was the last time a virus scan ever really found something ahead of time? It does a good enough job. But all these really hidden things, like CryptoLocker, it's going to find a way around. So if you're not diligent, you're still going to get infected. This is just going to take some of the little nastier, niggling things that are around and, and prevent them. Right, which takes me to my next point. And by far, if you take anything, quite literally anything, you can ignore this entire episode, if you take this piece of advice, you will be better off. It's automatic in just about every operating system today. But for the love of God, do your patches. Automatic patches, set those guys to run all the time, whenever Microsoft puts them out, whenever Apple puts them out, whenever your Linux distribution of choice puts them out, run your patches. For the love of God, please. The, the number one way to protect yourself from, I mean, even just protect yourself from bugs or from random happenings on your computer, especially viruses, especially remote attacks, Keep those patches current. And while you're at it, go out and grab the latest firmware from Linksys, from D-Link, from all these other guys that you know manufacture your off-the-shelf Best Buy wireless router. Install the latest build of that because the people don't think about it. Those have exploits too, and they get hacked fairly regularly. I know D-Link just had a really nasty bug where you could get in remotely into their router through a set of default usernames and passwords, and it's just bad news. Pull down updates for every electronic device you can find. Make sure they're set to be automatic if they can be, and keep them that way. It really saves a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort. 
Okay, so we put it, we put the operating system on, we updated it, and and I guess I forgot to also mention that the first thing you want to do is connect to the internet and update. Don't do anything else. Right. And if you want to be, if you want to go into difficult mode, create an image right there. But that takes a little more time and a little more effort. You got the patches. My next recommendation is going to a website. Uh, I can't spell it. Ninite, N I N I T E. I think that's what it is. I will get that in the show notes. And what that offers is a whole bunch of of free apps and stuff that that what what they do a good job of taking stripping out all those extra toolbars and everything. And it's a, a standalone configuration. You download everything. You check all the boxes. What do you want? You want Chrome. You want Firefox. You want uh, VLC. You want Team Viewer. Whatever it is, it's all free software. You you let it download. You come back half hour later, and it's there on your computer. Right, and that that brings up a good point. Pre-installing some really basic software, like you know, a good media player like VLC or a good browser like Chrome or Firefox, that goes a long way into protecting your your family's computers. Simply because they're not installing these random codec packs for Windows Media Center that they find across the internet, and you know, they're not clicking on oh. It looks like on my version of IE8, my Flash player is out, out of date, so I'm going to go ahead and install this random executable from bobsvideowarehouse.com, and, uh, and I'm going to hope it all works. Yeah, no, no. Look, Firefox does a really good job at keeping you safe. Chrome, in my opinion, keeps, uh, does a better job of keeping you safe because Flash player is pre-installed. If you install Chrome, you say, hey, look, if something asks for Flash player, just X out of the window, you already have it, and they're trying to scam you. Uh, and then Chrome does a really good job of keeping itself updated. Firefox does a good job. Internet Explorer is getting there. In my opinion, it's not quite there yet. So Firefox or Chrome, that will solve a lot of your problems. It will keep you from, from dealing with headaches in the future. Spend the time to hide the IE icon and yes. explain to whoever that – don't even explain. Say, this is your new browser. Lie to them. Say it's a new opera, it's, it's a new version, and you're going to have to learn this, but I'm going to be right here with you. And do the import of the bookmarks. Do all that. Make it as easy as possible. Take yep. the time now. I, hide, the, hide the icon. <laughs> uh, I've gone as far as changing all the Chrome icons on my grandmother's computer to the blue E, to the blue Internet Explorer icon, just so she wouldn't have to learn anything else. She said, this looks a little different, but kind of the same. I just put in the, the Blackjack website up there, right? Yes, Grandma, that's all you do. It's sad, but you know what? It's again all this stuff. Take time. Take the time now, so you can do it. The one thing I do want to add, and and I think this may be important, is install properly a remote desktop type client. So when you are at home and you get these phone calls, you can do it. So what I do is log me in. Used to have a free service. I'm. Sh I still think it's free. I for what it you is. do. You put it in. And you know what? Show show whoever it is how to turn it on. So leave it off by default, unless it's like it's a it's a lost cause, and that's your mileage may vary. But if you can explain to someone how to turn it on, leave it on the desktop somewhere, <laughs> and explain it to them that way, then that's a little more secure. But then you could remote do it, fix the problems, and again, one a couple 10, 15, 20 minutes a month will save you all this time next year. Yes. And uh, so Logman is a, a really good thing to bring up. They've actually got a uh, pseudo two-factor authentication deal where they will email you and have you give a confirmation code for every computer you log on to. Now, if you use Logman all day, every day, that gets really annoying. If you're like me and you're using it for mom and grandma's computer when they get messed up, it's not really a big deal, and it keeps it super secure. So Logman... Log me and gets my my badge of approval. And then while well, you're still there, you know what? We talked about backups. Install Dropbox for grandma or mother or if dad. Get the five hundred free megabytes by doing it. Just just install it for them and and just explain to them this is your new my documents folder. Because to be honest, they probably don't have that many documents. And it's always going to be there. So you're you're lucky that it's it's just right there. So again, all these free softwares, you know what they are. Just just you don't even have to explain it one by one. Just put it on, hide it in the background, and then when you need it, you use it, and it's there, and you can explain it to them later. Right. 
Right. And which which you know starts us moving into what about the the more security conscious members of your family? What about the the guys that they know enough, they know what they should do, but they don't exactly know how to get there. So you know, I've got I've got this uncle, and he comes to me all the time, and he says, "Tom, I read this thing about passwords being horrible and passwords being insecure. What can I do to make sure that?" You know, no one gets my my banking password when they get my Facebook password. If Facebook gets hacked, what do I do? And of course, right there, you can sit down and you can explain to them. And it's all about user education. Some people, and I'll admit, some people are a lost cause. Some people, you're just going to need to set it, forget it, make it as easy as you can on them. Don't try to confuse them with any terminology. Just say, use this. It's okay. But for the people that want to learn, for the people that are able to learn, you know, get them set up with, with LastPass. Get them set up with KeyPass if they don't want to you know, trust an online service with their password. I trust LastPass, but I understand if you don't. So KeyPass does a really good job at, at doing what LastPass does minus the synchronization. But you can make that happen with a weird hacky combination of you know, Dropbox, SpiderOak, Google Drive, one of those synchronization services. So, you know, tell them about uh, the, the YubiKeys. You know, show them the website. Show them, okay, well, here, they have to steal this thing that's on your keychain as well as steal your password to get into your websites if you use this. Um, there's, there's a lot of education that you can do around passwords, around using really long, complicated passwords to get into things, and most importantly, don't share passwords across applications. I know I've seen plenty of password.doc files in my day. LastPass or KeyPass is really the cure to getting rid of those. So, so I was going to just piggyback off of that. If you have somebody, a good gift would be YubiKey had the $25 or $30 one year of LastPass plus YubiKey. So for Great $35, deal. buy a couple of them. I think they have a two-pack or they had the three-pack last week, whatever it is. But even if you don't want to do that, just install LastPass. Disable the password manager. LastPass does it for you automatically, and show them how it works. Show them how easy it is. Yeah, and it's even really if it's fantastic. even if they use a, a crummy password, at least it's there. And if you need to remote in, the good part is they can. And not that I recommend this, but they can give you your master key, and you can change the passwords for them. Right. Or you could share the passwords. I, I do that with my dad when he has a problem and LastPass messes up. Again, I like remote where I don't have to actually remote into the computer. I like cloud-based services, especially for not 100% secure things. So all of this, all these things are, are little things that you can do. And then uh, what, what else do we want to do? Yeah, get rid of the dot .doc. Show them LastPass. Make it easy, but play with it first. All these things we're saying, know how to do it, because the first sign of difficulty, they're going to revert back. Right, right. And that's the thing you want to avoid. If if the updates aren't automatic, if they keep you know popping up, XP was n notorious at this. XP kept pop popping up and saying, hey, hey, you've got updates here. Hey, you got to restart me six or seven times. 7 got a whole, whole lot better, which is another reason to switch from XP to 7, because, you know, Wednesday nights, it'll assault patches, it'll automatically reboot, it'll be right there in the morning where they left it, everything's fine and automatic, they don't have to touch the thing, it just takes care of itself. And really, automation is, is one of the big keys to security. If it can keep itself safe and keep itself, uh, you know, protected from attackers from the outside automatically without people having to touch it, You've won. You've absolutely won, and that's really the key. Same thing with LastPass. If you can have you know, your uncle set a 64-character randomized password for his Facebook and then a different 64-character password for his bank, and he doesn't have to think about it, LastPass just fills in the boxes for him, that's it. You're done. You've won. And you've honestly given yourself a Christmas present by saving yourself a whole ton of time next year when you come back. You know, actually get to eat dessert for once instead of being stuck downstairs in the basement with the computer. Then, now, the hardest part is you're going to have a mixture of people. You're going to have someone who knows. You're going to have someone who don't know. Plan that. You're on the airplane. You have your car ride. Figure out your strategy because you're going to go there 
and the best thing and you want to get all of this done and you're not going to get it so prioritize your most important things prioritize who's going to do it and figure out what you want to say to them because because you're going to be as you're reformatting the computer someone's going to be asking you a whole nother question like I got this pop up what should I do and, and you're going to want to help them prioritize how you want to do it and and then you may get they're really secure and if sorry if you get really ambitious you may want to start looking at the router and we didn't even bring this up the first thing you really want to do is get on their Wi-Fi right I forgot I, we forgot to completely mention that <laughs> because the number the, the biggest facepalm moment is when you do show up and you want to start connecting to your devices no one knows the password so the first thing or before worse, you probably want no to do password. anything or the well no, you know what? I almost consider that a blessing because you're already on, and then you can quickly remote in and change the password. And I have a funny story. If you have FiOS, they put or the, a lot of the new routers put this. Uh, I still think it's a web key, which makes me sad. But now some of them are doing WPA keys, and they're putting it on the side of the box, which is underneath the computer desk, covered in dust. But it's at least there. So either write it down for them. Put tape it somewhere. Explain that when someone comes over and they want the Wi-Fi, this is the password. But get fix the Wi-Fi issue probably before you do anything else. Right, right. Because I mean, you know, I I used to be a kid, uh, a really really technical security minded kid. So I would find open Wi-Fi all the time, and you never know what you could find on an open Wi-Fi network with a computer that's not really patched all the way. So. The, the Wi-Fi password is going to be your first step for local intruders. And, you know, you might be saying, oh, well, no one's going to hack me. My neighbors won't hack me. But the fact is you just don't know. I mean, people drive around to their cars, cars all the time looking for open Wi-Fi hotspots just to, just to see what they can find, just to piece it together. So do yourself a favor. Go the extra mile and keep it safe just for the hell of it. Find out before you leave if they have a Wi-Fi router. If they don't, you may want to bring one. That's yeah. another excellent gift because because that's going to stop almost 100% of all problems that are downloadable based. If, if they don't have a router, get them a router. Then from there we can move on. But, but I've right. seen that. You show up, oh, we don't have a router. Why no, do we need a router? We only... Yeah, we my have computer's one computer. just connected right to the wall. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's not fine. So, look, we have two more minutes left, but you know what? All the stuff we've given you today, and I know it was a little, it was a little out there. Again, come up with a game plan. Give your relatives the gift of security. Give yourself the peace of mind. And you know what? If they want to know more, tell them to listen to the show. I, I tell them to listen to the show. That uncle that you were talking about, he may want to listen and learn something. Yeah, he he can start out, you know, on the on the low level of of us, where you know, we're keeping the everyman safe, and then if he gets really ambitious, he can move on to Steve Gibson and Security Now, where they're discussing buffer overflows and crafting your own TCP attack packets and all this other kind of cool, crazy stuff. Um, and and just just so people are aware, LastPass, as long as you're not using the mobile app, LastPass is 100% free. You can sign up for LastPass today. You can get all the browser add-ons. You can't share passwords, and you can't use the mobile app, and there's a couple other cool things that you won't be able to do, but if you're just looking to store browser passwords and you're not using them on your phone, LastPass is free. At the very least, try it I out. think... I think I think you can share passwords, but you can't uh, remotely change them. But again, okay. it, again, again, it saves your passwords. I, to be honest, I only recently purchased it only because I wanted to support them because they do such good work. And for twelve dollars a year, I mean, buy the five-year plan, sixty bucks, and just be done with it for five years. Yeah, that's that's not twelve bucks a month. That's twelve bucks a year. I've gone to McDonald's and spent more than twelve dollars before. I'm not proud of that, but it's happened. So, so again, take this with you when you're going, when you're taking that road trip to Grandma's house. But have a game plan. Figure out what you want to do. Keep her safe because if you keep her safe, it makes your life easier and makes the world safer. Very true. Any, so we're gonna end. Anything else? I think that's it. External hard okay. drive, take two. Yeah, take two. 
back up. Anyway, guys, have a good night. We'll see you.